Hello everybody, my name is Nia, I have 12.5k hours on Dota, and I'm here to teach you the very basics of the game. If you are new to top-down real-time strategy games, or new to video games in general, then this series of videos will definitely help you with the basic information you need to survive Dota. This is the first episode of my series, and I'm going to go through every setting to make things a little less daunting at the start, so let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we have to look at is character abilities. So, as you can see here, we've got an array of abilities that my character can use. It is very important that you're, you have hotkeys that you can easily reach in, and that you should always have your hand resting on so you can use them quickly in each fight and use them on the right people. So it's very important that you have hotkeys that you are comfortable using. Um, the basics are usually pretty good, Q, W, E, and R, and then I usually I change it up, but D and F are the default. But the main difference between any other one person using uh, changing the abilities around is obviously the hotkeys as well as quick cast. So I have a, a quick cast enabled personally, but I'm going to show you the difference now so you can judge for yourself which one you prefer. So if you have quick cast off, if I go to the, my character now and press Q, you can see the area of effect of which I can cast it and the area of effect of the actual ability. And then when I left click again, that's when the spell will go off. If I change it to trigger on key press, which is what I prefer, if I press Q, it will just go off, and if my character needs to walk into range to go press the button, or to use the ability, then he will go do that. And then, if I... the third option is trigger on key release. So, if I hold the button down, it looks just like the original one, but as soon as I let go of the button, it instantly goes off again. So there are three different ways you can do this. Uh, it's more preference than anything, but the main... the main thing you do is just, as long as it's whatever works for you, and you have buttons that you can easily reach. Those are the main things. Now we have go to the items. Very similar thing here. It's pretty much the exact same thing, except you need a few more buttons, you know? So most characters have four abilities, while every character has six slots, plus a neutral item slot and a TP slot. So it's quite important to have each one of those in easy spots as well, usually around where you would put your your basic abilities buttons as well. Um, so these uh, hotkeys work for me, but they may not work for you, and it's just... It's worth testing around, seeing which ones work for you, how your thumbs and your pinky finger, for example, work in conjunction with the rest of your with the rest of your fingers and how they work with all your buttons. So very important to just go with that. You can copy these if you'd like and try them out. It's up to you. I think these are quite noob friendly, so it may work for anybody who's watching the video. But I prefer I, I, I think you should definitely take your time to figure out which ones work for you as best as possible. Moving on, we're going to go to unit actions here. So select hero. So what exactly does this do? Well, it kind of just selects my hero. So if I click on someone else, I'll select and then press space, it will select my hero. If I double tap space, it will bring the camera centered and center him on my hero. If I hold space, it will now follow my hero. This is pretty important. Um, I can't think of many things that are more important than this because it really does help with just orientation around the map. It, Helps with everything, getting just everything moves faster and smoother by just having this thing on. So it's very important to, I would say, it's very important to have this. I don't think it is necessary, but if you if, if you want to help out your gameplay, get better at the game, just learn the game. This could be very good at keeping track of where your hero is, and I would say overall very important. Next thing, select all controlled units. So if I were to do that, what that means was if I have multiple units, so let's say I buy a Manta style, which creates multiple units of me. If I press F2 now, it will control all of my illusions and I can now you control everything all at once. Very important. Um, any character that uses, like any kind of character can get illusions. Obviously you can buy illusions with Manta style, you can get it with an illusion rune. It is very important that you have this uh, on a hotkey as well. So highly recommend, definitely get. All right, next hockey we're going to look at is attack move slash force attack. So this is quite important. Um, this is beyond important, actually. This is kind of the core, one of the core fundamentals of Dota 2. So what will happen if I press A, it's a movement, but my character will try and attack anything within within aggro range. I'm not exactly sure what the aggro range is, but as you can see, as soon as I get within like about 500 or 600 range of that character, I'll try and attack him. Um, the main thing this is used for, other than efficiency in farming, so obviously I can clear this entire wave by just A-clicking, and I don't have to click on each individual creep as I kill it. But the main thing about it is denying. So if I press A on these creeps, I'll 
deny them. And obviously that is an incredibly important part of laning. So you need this as a hockey. It is very important. The, in terms of core gameplay, you can't, you probably can't get more important than that. The next uh, hockey we've got is hold position. Also very important. So what does this do? Well, it interrupts your current attack or current anything, whatever you're going to do. And, um, and it makes you stop. You stop doing anything. Um, so if I tell my character to attack this guy and he'll start attacking, if I press S, he's going to stop doing it. If I would, someone to ask me, what would I use this for? Well, uh, if I attack this guy and spam S, I can cancel my attack like that. Uh, obviously, that's very good for denying, faking things out. But also, my character abilities have a wind up. So if I press S in time, it will cancel. And certain, in certain scenarios, this can be very useful. Um, so also very important. Um, I do recommend using S as a stopping point, but certain people want to use WASD as their cameras, so you can just make sure that this is somewhere very close that you can easily access because this is very important. All right, next one is select courier. So what does this do? Well, it's basically select hero, but on a courier. This will definitely help with ease once you learn your hotkeys and will just make everything more natural and easier and the game will flow better. So the next one we have here is courier, courier deliver items. So what does this do? Well, uh, in my stash, I can get an item and my courier will grab things from the stash or grab things from the secret shop, which I'll explain further in another video, and he can deliver them to me. So if I want to buy something and I put it in my stash here and then I press F4, which is my one, or left click at the bottom right here, my courier will deliver the items to me. And there you go. So I get my item from that. It, it's not necessary. As you can see, I can literally just go to the bottom right of my screen and press left click. If you want to save a, ho a closer hotkey for a more important thing, I think that is completely reasonable. But I think this also helps with the flow of the game, makes things easier, especially when I'm trying to micro multiple things at one time. I think this could be very helpful for people who are new, but is not necessary at all. Um, I would say if you are really struggling with hotkeys, don't bother. But if you're okay for hotkeys at the moment, or you got enough, or you feel like you have enough space, uh, definitely equip it. All right, next hotkey is purchase quick buy. So. What does this do? Well, you've got something at the bottom right here, which is a quick buy. If I shift left click something in the shop, all its components will be put in the quick buy for me. And if I press the button to buy quick buy, then it will buy those items until it makes the item. This is very important, not in the sense that you need it. Like I don't need it as a core fundamental of the game, but it is beyond helpful. It is, it is very useful. Now, obviously, I can just, if I wanted to buy an item, I can just right click it at the bottom right here instead of pressing F, as because that's my hotkey. But it is just so much more useful to have the ability to get it quickly, get things on the courier quickly. If you, I think this goes to the same rule as the other one. If you are struggling with hotkeys, don't worry about it. But it would definitely help you in the long term, um, and it will help your ease into the game, as well as just making things easier for you. All right, so the next thing we've got here is camera grip. So what does this do? Well, if I hold the middle mouse button, which is the hotkey I have for mouse grip, uh, as you can see, as I move my mouse from up, down, left, and right, it will move the camera with it. This is not necessary. Um, a lot of people will use edge pan to move their camera. A lot of people might use WASD or the cam or the uh, the arrow keys to move their cameras. I personally would not recommend using the arrow keys if you really can't move camera around. And you need keys to use the camera to move the camera around. I would use WASD or somewhere something like that, and put keys like hotkeys around uh, how you were, are going to you're going to move the camera because I believe that the arrow keys are way too far out of the way for that, and it will definitely impair your gameplay. But having the mouse grip or the world grip is not necessary in terms of um, gameplay. I think it helps personally for me, but it's definitely preference. I used to. When I started playing this game, I used the edge pan only, which I think is a perfectly valid way to play the game. Um, but as I as I got better at the game and as I moved on, I started using incorporating like grip as well. The importance of it is more for you. I think it's very personal. It's not something you really need to worry about at the start, but you might find that it helps you later on. The next thing we got on here is a scoreboard. Um, not too useful. Um, if I press the button, it will open the scoreboard here. Um, not necessary at all really especially when the scoreboard is right up here at the top left anyway that you can just click um nothing in terms of gameplay it's just something you can really look at uh i wouldn't worry about it you can keep it on that if you want you can also re completely remove the hotkey and put something else more important on that hotkey because it might be useful 
since it is pretty close to WSD as default, I'd recommend doing whatever you really want with that. I think it's all to personal preference. It really doesn't matter. Next, we've got control groups. I would highly recommend as a new player or somebody who's new to MOBA experiences or top down experiences that you stay away from this. Um, not that I think you should stay away from it forever because it will be very important at some point, but it is not important for you straight away or right now. So if you don't understand what control groups are, you can set up control groups, um, set up different groups with different hotkeys. Once I press those hotkeys, different units will be selected. It is more for micro. Um, and there are a couple micros in this game that really require control groups. So it's something definitely that is worth learning but not straight away. I would never recommend somebody go for a micro hero straight away unless they were really into StarCraft or Warcraft 3 or something. Um, so stay away from that straight away, I would say. So learnability, um, not necessary. I, I don't, as you can see, I didn't use it. I use a mix of control and the ability hotkey. So to learn things faster, um, but also you can, as you level up, there'll be a plus button above your abilities that you can just left click, um, really doesn't matter. Um, it will be helpful to use hotkeys for it in the future, but in terms of this learnability thing, um, not useful. Next, we've got upgrade talent. I have that as a hotkey, but I don't actually use it. Um, I literally just left click. So uh, it's usually so unnecessary that you need to do it fast. So I wouldn't bother with it. So move. This one, uh, very important for some, in very some niche situations, all right? So. What does move do? Well, it's essentially just a right click. It's just a normal right click, but if I use it on an enemy, I'm not going to attack them. Actually, I'm just going to follow them like this. So when it comes to enemies, there are certain times where you just need to follow them and not hit them. And there will be very niche situations where that happens, and I might explain it in a future video. I would recommend having that on, but not something you have to worry about for a while, I believe. Next, we've got the directional move. What this does is it means that if I were to use the directional move key, Instead, and on this, the opposite side, it's cliff. Instead of my character walking all the way around, he would walk as far up as he could here and just stop and try and move to here when he actually can't. Can be useful on a couple of heroes. Um, I don't think it's completely necessary, especially at the start of the game. In fact, I've gone my entire life without even using it, even on the heroes that are recommended for it. It can be useful. Um, not necessary, though. All right, so patrol. That's our next one. Uh, what does it do? Well, if you... Where to use the hotkey, you'd move from one place to the other and you'd set a patrol going back and forth, back and forth. I've never used this, never bothered, mainly because if I want to move back and forth from a place, if I hold shift, it will shift, it will queue up my action and I can just do the exact same thing, but with just by holding shift instead. So probably not worth the hotkey. I would definitely ignore it for now, um, but you might find use for it. But even then, I rarely find use for it anyway, so I wouldn't bother. And next one we've got is select other all other units. So what does this do? Well, when it says all other units, it means everything outside of my main hero. So if I use my Manta here and I press F3, it selects all everything other than my main hero. This is pretty important. Can be very useful on micro heroes, but I say it's important for micro heroes. You don't need to bother if you're new to the game. You don't plan on ever microing really. It's a hotkey that is very, ni very nice, very useful. I use it very often, but if you're not planning on microing ever, or you really don't like enjoy microing, or you really just are struggling with keys at the moment, don't bother with this one. Next one we've got is activate glyph. So we have something called a glyph of fortification. When you activate it, it grants your structures immunity for seven seconds. Pretty important, and especially since it has a five minute cooldown, it can be pretty easy to mess up. I took it off my hotkeys because I didn't want to accidentally click it because I did that over and over. Um, so I took it off. You don't need to do that. I would say it's also the same with the uh, with the activate scan. Don't need them on hotkeys, really. You can just press at the bottom left. But if you want to do it fast, then it could always be useful to have that as a hotkey. Next, we've got courier burst and courier shield. So as you might guess, the courier shield will protect your courier for a few seconds, making it completely invulnerable and the courier burst will give it a burst of move speed. Um, are these very important to use on hotkeys? I don't believe so. I don't use hotkeys for those because I can literally just press the bottom right here. I'm very used to that, but I can see that being very useful for some people to have. If you have a spare hotkey, I would use it. If not, I wouldn't bother. 
All right, purchase sticky. Well, so what this does is at the bottom right here, you can see I have a town portal scroll. That is my sticky item. Uh, it will stay there for the entirety of the game, no matter what. And if I press the purchase sticky button, I'll buy one of them. Um, I usually have it for town portal scrolls. I would recommend everyone have it for town portal scrolls because it's annoying. It's something you want to buy very often. And it's annoying to have to go into the shop and find it uh, up here and then right click it here instead of just pressing F5 as a short, for example. So highly recommend, not necessary, but especially since you can just right click at the bottom here, but pretty nice. Next we have take stash items. Um, so what this does is if I was to put something into the stash, um, if I press the button, it will instantly take it from the stash and put it into my inventory. I think this is useful. I think it's nice for the flow of the game, makes things easier as somebody who likes to do things very fast and very smoothly. But other than that, I wouldn't really bother. It isn't necessary, especially at the start of the game. But if you find that you have a, a hockey spare, you know, go for it, I think. Next, we've got open shop. You know, pretty helpful. Instead of clicking at the bottom right here on the money, instead I can press the T button and it will bring up the shop. Very important. I believe it is, it's not needed, but I think it is very important in terms of learning the game faster and doing things faster. If you want to build up from like a beginner to an intermediate, I'd recommend having this as a hotkey, but as I say, not necessary, especially, I, be I believe if you want to, if you really are struggling for hotkeys, I'd recommend putting on a hotkey just far away. Uh, so you can just, even if it is not something that you uh, have near everything else, it's just something that you can get to, you know, with simplicity. All right, and then we have, next we have the camera actions. So obviously this is where you can put WASD on if you want to control your cameras rather than the mouse. All right, next we've got the interface. So screenshot, obviously not really that necessary. Uh, console isn't necessary as well. Um, I very rarely use console and even then I wouldn't even bother really. Death summary. Um, you can literally just press and when you're dead, you're not in any state or any need to rush it. So I wouldn't bother with a hotkey, just save the hotkey. And alt modifier. Um, this basically just means instead of holding alt, you have to press a different button. It's alt just is, if you hold alt, you'll do an alternate version of certain abilities. So when I say that, I mean, for me, instead of, if I can self cast an ability, if I hold alt, it will automatically self cast it when I press the button. Um, so this just means instead of holding alt, I would hold a different button and then press the the ability hotkey. I I wouldn't really bother. I've never found an, ex an interest in it or need to, to do it, but maybe if you find it easier for you, you can do that. So, All right, next we have double tap ability to self cast. So this is only useful or only meaningful for people who don't use quick cast. So what that does is if I have an ability to self cast, if I double tap it really quickly, it will count as a self cast. It is very useful. Uh, if you aren't using a uh, quick cast, definitely have that, uh, this on. I would say no matter who you are, if you don't have quick cast, this is a, a must. You must have this one. I would also say the same thing for smart double tap, because this is just if you have quick cast and you hold alt, you'll cast it on yourself. I don't think you actually need quick cast on for this uh, for smart double tap, but I'd recommend having smart double tap on if you do have quick cast. So yeah, double tap abilities to self cast if you don't have quick cast and smart double tap if you do have quick cast. Next we've got shop always uses hotkeys. I'd recommend keeping this off, mainly because if you have the shop open and something starts happening on your screen that you need to quickly get to, you'd have to click then close the shop before you can do anything. Next we've got left click activates camera grip. What this means is instead of just holding the mouse button at uh, the middle mouse button, which is what I have it on, I would also have to hold left click. I don't really see the point in this. Uh, I guess so you don't accidentally use the camera grip, but I've never found any need for this. I don't bother with that. Next, we've got use legacy keys. This just means that if you were a Dota 1 player, it would go back to the um, hotkeys from Dota 1. I, I assume since you're here, you're a new player, so stay away from that. The, the legacy hotkeys are very weird. Um, I would say not very user friendly. So stay away from this. Don't bother with the legacy hotkeys. Next, we've got allow Windows slash command key to be bound. That's pretty useful. Um, I haven't used it because I don't really care. I don't need the extra hotkey. Um, can be very useful if you're running out. Upgrade talent options. When you left click on the talent tree, um, the left you have multiple choices, the left side or the right side. Um, this just means you can do it faster. I've never bothered with these. Sometimes I might accidentally press it, but I've never done it intentionally. Um, so I wouldn't bother with the upgrade talent options personally, but I could see somebody who wants to do it fast will benefit from this. 
So the first thing we have here in game is auto attack. So what does this mean? Well, if I have this on always, for example, my character will always attack the nearest thing it could possibly hit. I'd recommend not having this on. It can impede gameplay quite a lot, especially when you're trying to like fight against your character who wants to keep doing things like I want to move over here and then he's done. He goes back. It It's not too bad, but at the same time, like if I'm just moving around like this, my character will turn back and that can it can be quite important to have your character facing the right way at certain times because we have turn rates and stuff like that and you have to face where you need to cast. I'd recommend having this not on always, but we'll talk about the other options as well. So we've got standard. So if I uh, if I cast a spell over here, for example, afterwards my character will instantly go and try and attack the next thing. Um, I use this. I think it's quite helpful, personally, just so I can be a bit lazier with how I do things. Um, but it's not necessary. It can be detrimental in certain cases, so if I'm playing a hero like Tinker, who doesn't want to right-click and uses only spells, that can be kind of annoying to have on. But I'd reckon, I'd say standard is just standard, and if you really don't like it, I'd change it to never, which means even after I do anything, my character will never auto-attack this guy unless I tell him to. So I press that, nothing happens, because he's not being told to do anything. He's not meant to do anything there. So personally, I recommend standard. Just makes things nice and easy. If you feel that you need to do it on always, you can do, even though I'd recommend not doing it. And if you feel that you don't want to have any sort of hindrance at all, never is can be very useful. So it does come down to personal preference, but standard is well-rounded and I think it works well. Next, we've got auto select summon units. So press the button, it will automatically select the units that have been summoned. Um, I don't recommend this. I think it's not very good. I used to use this when I was younger, but it became more of a hindrance as I tried to improve. I wouldn't recommend using this as a as an option. I'd keep that off if I were you. Um, but I could see it being useful for some people who don't want to use more hotkeys. Next, we've got unified orders with control. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if I summon these characters and then I'm not using them, and then I press control, everyone will move even though I haven't selected these guys. You may be wondering what exactly happens when you don't have it on. Well, if I have the all these characters selected and then I hold control, only my main character will do it even though I have all of them selected. I very, very rarely use this hotkey. It doesn't really feel necessary. I wouldn't bother with this option. Feels unnecessary, but I can see the, the value in it. I think it's very. it can be very useful. I'd recommend it, not for beginners though, um, but something that can be very useful later on. Next, teleport requires hold slash stop. What that means is if I try and use a teleportation scroll like this, the only way to cancel it, you can see I'm right clicking, nothing's happening, but as soon as I press S, it will cancel. That's the only way to cancel it. Definitely, 100%, absolutely have this on. You need this. So many, so many people have messed up their teleports. This will stop so many bad situations, so many. I wish I knew about this when I was learning the game. Definitely, definitely, definitely have this on. You need this. It will just save your life so many times. Just make everything so much better. Next, we've got channeled abilities require hold slash stop. Channeling ability means that you have to do nothing but do that ability for a while. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of like a wind up time, basically. Black hole, for example, you can only use black hole for four seconds to keep it going. If you were to cancel black hole, it would stop halfway through. That's probably a bad explanation, but this is something that I would recommend for people who like to use the characters that require channeled abilities. So heroes like Primal Beast or Pudge or Enigma, they have big ultimates that require channeling and sometimes it can be really, really annoying when you press the button and accidentally move straight away and can instantly cancel it, put it on a 200 second cooldown or something. Um, I would definitely recommend having this on. I only recently put this on, but it has definitely helped to me, even though I've been trying to get used to it for a while. I still think it's really good. Next we've got this setting, right click allies. Um, I think it's on to follow by, by default. If you have the, the move key active or you use the A key, I don't think this is very necessary. I think you should just try this in these this one in the settings because it is all personal preference. Um, I can see anybody using any one of these different ones for any reason. So personally, I like to use to attack. Okay, next we've got quick attack and quick move. So what this means is this one's where the we've got the attack here and then we have move in this one here. Instead of being not quick cast, this just puts them on quick cast. So I don't have to, you know, press A and then left click or press D and then left click to do it. I just press the button and because 
it's on quick cast or quick move that's how it works um if you're on quick cast i'd recommend it if you don't like quick cast don't have it on next we have edge pan which means if i put my mouse to the edge of the screen it will move the screen um, this is helpful for some players and also not for others. If you use WASD, it can be pretty nice not to uh, have to um, have the annoyance of trying to find an enemy on the very edge here and then moving, accidentally hitting the edge of the the uh, the screen and moving your camera and fucking up your positioning. So I would say have it on if you don't use WASD. But if you do have WASD, probably worth turning off edge pan. I would say. Next is we have reverse camera grip. It's just inverted camera grip. Grip. So if I wanted to look right instead of dragging left, I'd actually drag right. It's uh, yeah, it's just inverting basically, and I don't think it, it's just pass on preference. If you like inversion, then that's fine. Next, we have center camera on hero on respawn. So what this means is, when you die and respawn, your ca camera will instantly move to where your character respawn, which will be in the fountain. I recommend having this off. Uh, it, it, I've seen it. It's happened to me many times, and I've seen it happen to so many different people so many times, where they they want to instantly TP after they respawn and then the camera moves to them, and then they accidentally TP to base, even though they're already in it. So, have this off. Definitely have this off. Um, it will probably it will hinder you in the long run, for sure. So don't worry about it. Next, we have disable camera zoom, which if you use camera grip like this, or middle mouse button, can also... It'll be, it's helpful if you don't want to accidentally zoom in and out. Um, personally, I don't bother, but it can be very useful for some people. Next, we have hold select hero to follow. If I just double tap the hero select thing and hold it on the second tap, it does the exact same thing. So it just makes it slightly easier. Next, we have camera speed up to personal preference. Obviously, the higher the camera speed, the more the faster you'll move with edge panning and everything. Um, yeah, completely up to you. Next, we have the minimap. So this one can be quite important. So this is what the minimap normally looks like. Um, each character has a designated color at the top of the screen. As you can see, the techies at the top there is pink while I'm blue. We look at the different like pros and cons of this so pros of this i can see which direction they're facing so i know which way they're going even if they're only appearing for a very short amount of time con to this though i have to look to the top of my screen to know which hero it is because i have to designate it to a different color and doing that quickly can be very hard which is why i have it on invert alt toggle which shows the characters faces now as a new player obviously you have no idea who these are like these people are all very new to you because there's over 100 heroes i think personally i would recommend this off this invert alt toggle or just keeping it default for at first but once you as you learn each character you probably want to make it so you can see their faces because that just makes everything easier to recognize everything will become faster to you but i believe it is down to personal preference and you don't have to worry about it too much so using simple colors and minimap it completely removes the um the color aspect from it so as you can see uh it doesn't it just means oh i can see an enemy or i can see an ally it's uh it just makes things simpler, and I believe that this is probably a hindrance, especially in the long run, because not being able to recognize who it is straight away from the minimap is probably something that you... It, it can be quite bad. You need to know who is doing what uh, and where they are on the map, especially at a higher rank. So definitely have this off. You, This is not something you want. It doesn't affect you if you use the invert alt toggle anyway, but I would definitely recommend having it off anyway. Next is hide minimap background. Was even what this does it just means to hide the background and you can see things a lot clearer uh personally i don't like this i like to be able to see the minimap but if you want to make things clearer for you uh by all means have this on it can be very useful next is use simple minimap background as you can see it just has the base outline of everything rather than all the intricacies of the river and the the camps and trees and stuff like that um personally i don't use a simple minimap i used to but i've kind of gone off gone off it now um, I don't think it's very important though, but you can use either or, definitely personal preference. Next is use extra large minimap. Well, as you can see at the bottom left here, you can see my map is going in and out, like getting bigger or smaller. Personally, I like to keep the HUD as small as possible, so I would not use it, but I think that is completely personal preference, just making things a little larger, and it's never hurt, in it. never hurt anybody, so. Next we have use all to show hero icons, which definitely better you do you want to have this on because reading the characters names rather than seeing the icons is just too slow um going back to what i said earlier just making things easier faster stuff like that once you learn the characters you know faces it will be a lot better than reading their name and it's just easier on the eyes so I'd definitely go with this i'd say and lastly in the minimap section we have show minimap on the right which means obviously it will just swap things over 
Um, personally, I use it in the left because that's by default, but this is really just personal preference. I know a pro player called Insania uses it on the right, but again, really just personal preference. If you'd rather have to shop in the left side, it looks absolutely hideous to me, but I am, you know, I'm just one guy. So, and then we got the last here, which is minimap hero size. Obviously, the smaller you have it, the smaller the minimap, uh, the heroes are, and the bigger you have it, the bigger. Um, there's a middle ground here that is probably a lot better. I definitely, default was 100%, but I would, I personally prefer it 150%, makes things easier to see. Um, characters do overlap sometimes a little bit, but I definitely, that's why I don't make it too big. But I would definitely recommend it about 150%. It's really done to personal preference, but I would definitely put it, up, I would say definitely put it above default. Next we've got holding alt shit highlights your hero. It's very simple, literally just puts an arrow above your hero. Not that useful. Um, I just have it on because why not? Next we've got old, holding alt shows neutral spawn boxes. This is something that is very important. I would just have that on. Uh, I'll explain it in another video at some point, but definitely have it on. Holding alt shows tower attack range. Very important. Just shows the attack range of towers. Have that on as well. And then show ability range finder while casting. Basically just means when you're casting an ability with without quick cast on, it will show an arrow between you and your holding your cursor. I don't think it's that important. Um, I've never found it to be like an import, like a very useful way of finding range. So I wouldn't bother with that. I have it on because why not? It looks cooler to have an arrow for some reason, but it really doesn't matter. And as we've got display names over health bar. Uh, so you can have the hero name here, which will be techies. You can have the player name, which for this one is Andreas. And uh, the last one, which is nothing. I prefer nothing because it clutters the screen a bit less, um, but I could see it being anybody using anything, you know? Um, so, you know, it's completely up to you, I'd say. All right, next we've got Enable Simple Shop. This can be useful for very new players. I would never recommend this to somebody who's played for a while. This will only hinder you to ever like use later on. But at the very start, maybe for your first couple games, Simple Shop is fine, I guess. It gets the job done when you're trying to learn the game. Um, but I definitely do not recommend this to anybody who, anybody who's like not even beginner, like just a bit after beginner, you know, like after you've played your first 10 games, go back to default shop or something because simple shop really just does not do the job. So ignore simple shop, I would say, but if you really are daunted by the shop, I would make a video on it someday. But if you're very daunted by the shop, don't, uh, then you can use the enable simple shop. But, um, I definitely would stay away from that, even if you knew. Next, we got disabling in your tips, in game tips. Well, as you play, they have a little shitty wizard, as they call it, who tells you to do certain things because maybe you haven't gotten enough XP recently, or maybe you um, haven't used a magic wand recently. It can be useful. Um, sometimes it's useful. I would recommend having it on for your first few games, but if it gets annoying, just turn it off. It's really not that important. All right, next one is disable status text. So what is status text? Well, there are different status effects characters can get like stuns, slows, root, etc. So if I stun this guy, it will show over his head that he has been stunned and the timer will go down as you can see and uh, we'll show how long he's stunned for. Um, don't have this off because you don't, you. it is very important that you see how long people stun for. It just makes things so much easier. Damage numbers. Well, as you can see, if I attack this guy, there's a little number that comes up there. That's how much damage I'm doing to him. Um, so if I, you were to hide the damage number, you would, that's what you would be get. you would be hiding those little numbers. Personally, really doesn't matter. I, they're so small anyway. It's kind of hard to, to even notice it. It doesn't clutter the screen. I'd keep that, keep that setting off for now, just because it's not even bother. Next, we've got show queued orders on the HUD. This just means that when I queue my orders like this, as you can see here, I've got the little things um, that show me what my characters are going to do next. It's nice. It doesn't mean anything. It's just nice. Um, sometimes you can, it can bug though and get stuck on your screen for like a solid minute. That can be very annoying. Um, so I would, if, if that keeps happening to you and it's really, really annoying, I would turn it off then. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't really bother. Next, we've got colorblind mode. So this makes your green health bar blue it makes your the green on the agility section yellow and it makes uh agility treads uh yellow instead of green um this is and it also makes green characters on the minimap uh blue as well and the health bars blue i personally don't find it useful because i feel like i sometimes might mix up my um health bar and mana bar because they're the exact same color um so i have 
colorblind mode off, but it really doesn't matter too much. Next, we have differentiate ally health bars. Uh, an ally will have uh, a different colored health bar to me. It makes no difference to me. I can see it being useful for people, but I wouldn't bother. Next, we have automatically choose cursor size. Um, I don't really see any reason for this. It just kind of scales based on your resolution. Um, but if you're using, you know, 1920 by 1080, this really doesn't matter. 100% is completely fine. You can also make it a lot bigger if you'd like. Um, that is obviously comically large, and this is obviously going to be comically small. Um, but, you know, it's really up to you at the, at the end of the day. I say this all personal preference. I prefer the default. Next, we have show help tips. I've never had this on. I just tested it now, and it lets you, it has, has a little yellow ping, and then when you click it, it gives you a tip. It can be useful. Gotta say no. First, we've got summoned unit auto attack. This just means that um, I can choose what my uh, I want my summoned units, which are the illusions, for example, or micro units. I want I choose what auto attack system they've got, which is the same as the one up here um, for my main hero. So I just have it on same as hero because I just prefer it that way. I think it's all up to preference, but personally, I think that it's just easier to have it on same as hero. Next, we have disable auto attack when stop is held. This is only really useful if you have auto attack on as always. Um, I would say it's probably useful. It just keeps your characters from auto attacking. I would say have that on. Next, we got shop search gets focused on open, which means as soon as I open the shop, the search box will get focused, which means that if I were to press my Q, for example, because something happened, I would actually type Q into the search bar. I'd recommend having this off just because opening the shop will also mess with how the hotkey works. So if I was to press T to open the shop and then press T to close it again, I'd actually put T in the search bar. This could be very, this could hinder you quite a lot. So I would recommend having that off. So next we have smart attack move. So what does this mean? Well, if I press A, A click somewhere, no matter where I tell it to go, it will always attack the next unit along, along the path. But if I have smart attack move on, I go into the options here, I have this on, and then I press in the area, as you can see, because I'm close enough to this creep, I'll ignore him completely and I'll go attack this creep here. Um, this is very useful for to micro. Personally, I like this, but I could also see you not liking that. I think it's worth trying in a demo mode real quick. I think it's a personal preference thing, but can be very useful for people who like to micro. Next, you have auto repeat right mouse. This just means if I hold right click, it will automatically do another right click. If I have that off and I don't hold right click, it won't do another right click. Very useful, just makes things easier. I'd recommend having it on. Next, we have some just quality of life stuff here. I don't really, I really need to go through this because this is all personal preference. Enable screen check. I would definitely turn this off because it makes the screen shake when you get stunned, etc. It can be very distracting. Uh, most people have screen check off in games just because it is very distracting. And I would recommend having that off. Next, we have smooth drag camera when spectating. This just means that when I'm spectating, it will have a nice smoothness to it instead of being all janky like this because it's going instantly. Um, this is all for cin cinematic stuff. If you like a caster or something, I wouldn't bother with this if you just want to play the game. All right, next we've got minimap misclick protection time. So if you accidentally move, you want to select here or something and you accidentally select on the minimap, um, there's a, there will be however long you put here as a delay where you actually won't do anything to the, mi to the minimap. I don't do anything with this. I think it's all personal preference. If you misclick a lot, it might be useful. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother. Next, we've got double tap self cast timeout. Um, as you can see, it basically just means that it's the time you have to press the button again to make it cast on yourself, which means, and it's, this is a sixth of a second. Um, I, if you're using quick cast, this isn't important. If you, if you aren't using quick cast, however, um, I'd recommend 60. I, I think the default is completely fine. If you have this on two seconds, that is way too long because then you'd press, I press an ability once, and then if you need to, use it on somebody else rather than on yourself, you have to wait two seconds before you can press it again. Um, bad. I would definitely... i definitely just have them 60 Next, you've got dynamically scale hero icons, which means, obviously, the closer they are together, the um, the more they move, uh, the, the smaller they'll get, just so you can see everything um, when they get closer together. Um, I've never had this on. Uh, I can see this being useful, but I don't like to have my the characters like moving in and out on the map just because it makes things harder to see. Um, so it's definitely personal preference. Next, we have move after ability target cancelled. This is only useful if you don't use quick cast or if you use the other one. It's all down to personal preference. I'd say it's fine doing either or. 
Uh, it just means you have to do one less thing when you right click out of a, an ability. Uh, I would recommend having it on, but I use also use quick cast, so it actually doesn't make any difference to me. So uh, down to personal preference. Next is camera color shift when dead. Doesn't really matter. Personal preference completely. After that, we have display network information. This just means at the top right, as you can see me toggling on and off, it just shows my ping, my FPS, and my, my loss. And this is useful. I would have this on at all times, just so you can see your performance. It's really useful. Next, we have high tips on loading screens. I don't actually think this does anything. We have very rarely have loading screens in this game now. And when we do, I've never seen a tip, even though this is on, or this is off even. So I don't think that actually, don't think that actually does anything. Then we have default to tournament spoiler box on. We have the to we have tournaments. We can see them in the main menu. Um, so if you want to have it by, to you don't want to be spoiled, I'd recommend having it on, down to personal preference there. Automatically add new items to co collection. Um, it doesn't really matter. I don't even know what the collection is for. It's actually worthless. Don't bother. Don't even try it. Don't even think about it. Use mouse 4 and 5 for dashboard, forward and back. Yeah, useful. Doesn't matter really. But definitely down to personal preference. Strict solo roll queue matchmaking. What this means is, if if I queue for a ranked roll queue game on my own, I will go against and play with only solo players. This I would recommend having. I would recommend highly having this on. It is unbelievably annoying when you queue for a game uh, in roll queue and you queue into parties. One player is really good. One player is really bad on their party, and they somehow just mess everything up by like saying oh i need to i want to swap roles with you stuff like that even though you queued for some role or just the rank disparity always being terrible uh because you know it's a party um i'd recommend having this on it will slightly lengthen your your queue times but it will definitely help you in terms of quality of matches you will never have to deal with um terrible parties ever again this is not something you should like this is something you should always have on uh, if you really care about your games Use Plus Assistant rather than the default guide. You don't need to worry about this straight away, unless you're planning on spending money straight away, <laughs> because this is only for something that people with Dota Plus buy, which is a monthly subscription thing. Um, so you don't really need to worry about this straight away. If you want it though, I recommend using it because I think that a lot of the default guide for this game is dog shit, and a lot of uh, player-made guides are also dog shit, and they don't keep up to date. The plus assistant, even though it's pretty dog shit, it's just nice to have uh, what people... Next we have auto deliver on by default in turbo games. I hate that system, um, mainly because I, I'm more mechanical. I like my characters not to... Oh, I don't like things doing being done automatically when I don't want them to be done. Um, I have it off, but for somebody who wants to play turbo, not care about the game and stuff like that, because it really doesn't matter. That one, you can do whatever you want with that. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Uh, display Steam messages as whispers, I have that off just because I don't sometimes record stuff or stream stuff and I don't want people seeing my whispers. Um, but otherwise, for you guys, it doesn't actually matter if you don't do any sort of recording or you aren't streaming to your friends. Channel, channel messages appear in other channel tabs. This means that if you're in one tab, other messages will show from other tabs. This is pretty helpful for if you're looking at party chat or an endgame lobby chat or just a guild chat. I have this on, really doesn't matter, also personal preference. Next we have allowed chat. I think on by default it's only friendly players and teammates or even just friendly players. Uh, I recommend having it if you really don't, if you really want to try hard, uh, probably just friendly players and teammates um, because having the enemy players on will give you no benefit unless they're just trolling or something and by that point you know, the game's probably already over. Um, I have an all players because I like to talk to people and I like to yell at people and flame them and stuff like that and I also like to be flamed back because it's funny uh, and good content. But yeah, personal reference. Apply allowed chat filter settings to spectating. This just means that when you're spectating the game, it will have a chat filter on, which is, that makes sense, I suppose. I've never had it on, but personal preference, if you feel the need for it, that's completely fine. Join regional chat channel and startup. This just means that you'll join a, a chat the, that's in your the closest region to you and um, automatically, and uh, you can meet new people there. You can talk to people. It, is, it can be a nice time. Um, I have it off because I don't want to make a new friend, um, but I can see it being useful for people. Next, we have exposed public match data. This one is interesting. So what this does is it means that third party um, websites and apps can access your match data, which means they can track 
uh, how many games you played on Heroes, how what your KD is, how fast you farm. Basically, all the details of a game it can track. Um, I have this on because I like to look at uh, my stats and compare them to others. Um, but that also means that other people can look at your stats and stuff and maybe be able to find things about you. And we have something called Overwolf or Dota Plus, even though they've got the same names as the paid thing. But it's actually just a free app you can download that shows the people in your game. And if they have exposed public match data on, they'll be able to see what kind of heroes you're playing recently. If you're really tryharding, have this off. But I think it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care what pe if people know what I play. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it personally. All right, let's so our video. I think this is all down to your computer. I think I don't really need to to go through this with you. It's all kind of what you need to do um, to keep the best range possible. I would recommend, you know, going for whatever your the Hertz monitor you have is in terms of frame rate, but it's nice to go over that. Um, I know some players, um, there's, a, there's an ex-pro player called Mason, who's a streamer as well. He has everything on the lowest possible. And I think he, I believe he said that he doesn't he has it on everything everything on the lowest so that he doesn't have to deal with as much clutter on his screen um which is a perfectly valid reason to do any of that um i think that having the lowest on everything could completely reduce clutter and i know that having the effects quality on low will reduce certain or not reduce completely remove certain effects from the game that are, aren't necessary for you to see so i would i would say it's whatever your personal preferences as well as the, as the specs of your computer and how well your computer runs um, so that's all completely up to you. Next we have audio. Obviously, you can see my, my microphone being up to, picked up there. Um, okay, again, all up to you. And then we have the account where this is the only thing you really need to do here. Manage pro and teams if you ever get that to that point. You can reset your MMR every year, which is pretty nice. And um, if you need to have a phone number associated with the account to allow you to play ranked so and yeah that is all the settings thank you so much for watching as you can see at the top of the screen this has been a very long video to make um i really hope it doesn't turn out this long because i understand that not everybody wants to watch an hour long video just to go through the basic settings of a game um but i will try and make any video i make in the future shorter this will be the longest one by far i hope um but i appreciate all of you for watching i really hope this helped any new players um if i didn't explain something well enough or you need help with something feel free to message me in the comments uh, i'm definitely going to see them so feel free to say to ask anything that you find is difficult to understand and i will try and explain it to you better um but thank you so much for watching again um and i hope to see you again uh goodbye for now